The macro is one of the best tools in Excel to save time and also automate daily tasks. So let's say I have a sales report with a lot of different informations and every day I need to do exactly the same analysis. I can go to the developer tab and then I can go to macros, click run. And yeah, that's it. I done. So this is the analysis that I did with my automation, the macro here in Excel. So step by step from scratch, let's see how can we create something similar using the macros in Excel. The first step that we need to do in order to automate tasks in Excel is to enable the developer tab because within the developer tab, we have the tools that we need to use, such as the record macro and also macros. So let's go to the home tab, for example, and then in any blank spot, you can right click and then go to customize the ribbon. Here you can go to popular commands and instead of using this option, you can go to main tabs. Now we're going to have developer. You can click here, click add, and then click OK. That's it. This is how we can enable the developer tab in Excel. Now, before we go to the second step, that is to create our macros using required macro and macros, we can first think what are the tasks that I need to do? What, are, what, are, what is the automation that I need? So as you can see here, I have a sales report with information such as the order ID, the date, the month, the brand name, the product name, and on and on. And uh, if you want to download this Excel file, you can do so. Just click in the link in the description, 100% free. You can download this Excel file and then you can follow with me. This is step by step using the same data as I'm using here. But of course, if you want to use a different data, you can still do it. You can use your own data set to automate tasks in Excel. So let's say every day or every other day or every month, I need to do exactly the same task. I need to take an Excel file. And then I need to create some analysis using the data that I have. So this is what I'm going to do. Uh, with the automations, I can start first, let's say, adding here a new sheet. And then with this new sheet, I can add the analysis that I'm going to do. And uh, as the analysis, I can analyze maybe the total sold per region, maybe the total sold per month, and uh, informations like that. So. Let's do the automation itself. Developer and then record macro. Within this new window, you can input some information. You can make some change. We can start with the macro name. You can input here the name that you like the most. I'm going to type in here maybe daily task. But uh, the problem is I can't, I cannot separate the words like I'm doing here. So instead of using a space to separate the, or the words, I'm going to use a underscore, underscore, and then, yeah, okay. I can also use a shortcut key, and whenever I hit this shortcut key, the macro, the automation is going to be, uh, is going to run for me. And I can also input here a description, but uh, I can also simply click in OK, and that's it. Now, everything that we do here, all the clicks, all the tools that we use, all the functions, formulas, everything, all the keys that you hit is going to be saved, stored in the macro, in this automation. So let's start with the first step, that is clicking here in this plus sign to add a new sheet. In this sheet, I want you to start with the column A, let's say A1, and here I want you to input month. And now in the row underneath it, I want you to input Jan, that is stands for January. Click in the cell in the bottom right corner, hold and drag it out to you until I see the December like this. Now in the next column, in the column B, Cell B1, I can type total sold. And in the next column, I can type uh, total quantity. Now I can use sum if function to help me add up the values that corresponding to the January month, the match with my criteria, that is the month. And the way I bring back as result the total sold for each one of the corresponding months. Equal sign sum if function. This is the first analysis that I'm going to do here. One, two to select. And then as the range is the range where I need to check the months, the criteria. That way I'm going to go back to the sheet one, and then I'm going to select everything that I have in the column C. I can either select a small range like this or click over the letter C to select literally the entire column. Trauma. Now I can go back to the sheet two and then select the criteria that is going to be the January month like this. Trauma. Now my sum range is going to be in the sheet one, the Column H, the total price. Okay, that's it. I can press enter. 
and uh, as the sales that I have, not the overall or the grand total, not the addition of all the values, but the addition of the sales of the January is equal to $9,000 roughly. Let me click in, the, in this preview cell where we did the function. In the bottom right corner, I click, hold and drag down. Now, as the total quantity sold, I can basically do something similar using the equal sign, the summary function. But uh, the thing that is going to change here, I want you to select, is the sum range. Because the rest of all the arguments that we have is going to be the same. The range, as we did before, is going to be the months, comma. The criteria is going to be the month that I have to the left, comma. Now, the sum range is going to be different. It's going to be the column F, where I have the quantity. That's it. Enter. Let me bring it down. Click, hold, and drag like this. And yeah, I done with the first analysis. Now, let me select everything that I have. Go to Home tab. Ally everyone in the middle and also ally everyone in the center like this. I'm going to select the headers, put everything in bold. Change the background color, maybe using a black one and uh, with white font. All the months, I'm going to select everything and I lie to the left, like this. The total sold, because I'm talking about money, currency, I can format as the currency. So I can click here, format as dollar, for example. And yeah, now let me select the column A, B, and C. And in between one column and another, I click, hold, and drag to the right. That way I can change the width of those columns and I can make it evenly. So, okay, the first is analysis. Is done, but uh, maybe I can just do one little change. Adding here, I can add conditional formatting to help me visualize better the data. So I want to go to the total sold like this, and then I can go to the home tab here to the right, conditional formatting, and then color scales. I can change and using the color, this first scale right here, green, yellow, and red color scale. Okay, I'm gonna do something similar with the total quantity conditional formatting, but uh, this time I'm going to use icon sets like this. Okay, yeah, that's it. Now, the second analysis that I need to create here is about the regions that I have. So, let me input here, or better, let me select those preview cells, Control c to cope, and uh, here in the column E, Control v to paste. Just to cope and paste the format. I'm going to have the region. Uh, as a region, I have south, north, east and west okay and with those informations i can have maybe the total sold for example so again let me take here the total sold Control c to code here in the column f Control v equal sign some if function again double click want you to select now something uh is going to change because my criteria is the region and as the range i need to select the range that i have in the sheet one where i have the regions that is the column Okay, like this, comma, my criteria is going to be the first region, comma, and the sum range is going to be the total sold or the total price. Enter. Yeah, that's it. Click, hold, and drag down. And again, I'm going to apply here a conditional formatting just to help me visualize better the data and also put everything with the dollar sign. Let me select the column E and F. In between one column and another, I click, hold, and drag to the right just to change the width and make it evenly. Uh, in between those columns, and I think I done maybe some uh, another change that I can do here is creating a chart in Excel to visualize better this second analysis that I did. So let me select everything and remember, if we go to the developer tab, I can see that a macro is still recording. I want to click here insert, and then uh, as the chart, I want to use a pie done a chart. Okay, like this one. And uh, this chart right here, I'm going to go to the chart design and I uh, input a different format of chart. Maybe this one right here, style 8. Yeah, that's it. So I think we're done. Let me click out, maybe in the column in the cell A1. And then I can go to the developer tab and then stop recording. Okay, that's it. This is how we can record a macro in Excel. This is how we can do an automation in Excel. Every time now that we have... Uh, a new Excel file with new data, it's always going to work. The fourth step is how can we save a macro in Excel to make sure tomorrow or every other day that I need to update my data set? How can I use the same automation that I did here for all those different files, for all those different data? 
So first, let's check if it's working. I'm going to go again to the developer tab and then I can click in macros to visualize the macros that we did. And as you can see, the daily task that is the name of my macro that we just did here together is yeah, the first one in the list. I can click run to run this automation and let's check if it's going to work. Yeah, okay. So it, it worked. As you can see here, now I have a third sheet with this name, sheet three. Why I have it here, sheet, sheet three? Because as we did in the automation, I simply click in the plus sign and the plus sign doesn't matter how many sheets you have. Excel is always going to add another one. And if I go again to the sheet one and go to the developer tab, macros and run the macro, as you can see, now I have a fourth sheet with the automations that we did. And everything here is working properly. I have my functions, some if here too, I have the some if and also here and all the conditional formattings are working properly. Also the headers with the format and on and on. So this is how we can create an automation in Excel. And let's see now, how can we save a macro in Excel? To save a macro in Excel is not that difficult. You just need to click here on file and then you can go to save as and then you can choose browse. And with this new window that Excel is going to open for you, you can see all the files in your computer and all the folders. And then you can choose a location to save your Excel file. But something very important is the most important thing. You need to change the extension of the file to XLSM. So click here, save as type and then go to the second option, Excel Macro Enabled Workbook. Click here. Okay, that's it. This is the most important thing that we need to do. Now you can change the file name, maybe ABC123 or whatever. You can choose the name that you like the most to use in your Excel file, and then you can go to save, and that's it. So this is how we can create, save, and run a macro in Excel. And remember, every time you have a new workbook or a new Excel file, Something that you can do is you can open this new workbook and then copy and paste the information that you have within the same sheet right here, sheet one, where we did the automation. Okay. So basically, you're going to have always this main Excel file where you did the automations, where you, you did the macro. So keep this Excel file. And whenever you, you need to use the macro, the automation again to complete a task in Excel. You can open this main Excel file and then copy and paste the new data into this one right here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to create a macro in Excel step by step from scratch to help us automate tasks and also save time with Excel. And if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know. Comment down below and I see you tomorrow. As everybody has a new video, I see you there.